Hello everybody, today I'm going to be presenting my work with the title of Classification and Dynamic Assessment of the Group-Based Control Schemes Application in HVDC Systems. So as an outline, first I present the introduction of the work, after that I will briefly explain the origin of the grid forming control. Then based on this origin, I will define three classes of the grid forming control schemes with different capabilities and functionalities. Uh, we have done two sets of studies for these three classes. Uh, the first one is robustness analysis, where the grid forming control is connected to a constant frequency grid. In this case, we analyze the effect of the grid impedance and also uh, PLL response time uh, to the control performance. The second study is in connection to a variable frequency grid in order to investigate the inertial support of these introduced schemes. Uh, in the last part of the paper, we have included the dynamics of DC bus to see how grid forming control affects the DC bus dynamics in an HVDC system. And finally, I will conclude the paper. Uh, so as you know, the classical pattern of power generation is evolving from, uh, to, is evolving towards 100% use of renewable energy resources. These resources are usually connected to the grid with power electronics converters. And the power electronic converters, in contrary to the synchronous machine, uh, do not inherently bring inertia to the power system. And as a result, in the future, we will have a potentially uh, a low inertia power system. A technical solution for this problem is to virtually emulate the inertial behavior of the synchronous machine with power converters. For this aim, several grid forming control schemes are introduced in the literature like virtual synchronous machine, synchron verter, virtual synchronous generator, and group control. Our focus in this presentation is on the group-based schemes, and we would like to investigate on the origin and then capabilities of these uh, control schemes. Uh, to see what is clearly the origin of the grid forming control, let's consider a single converter connected to an AC grid with a transformer. Uh, the grid is modeled with an ideal voltage source in series with an equivalent Thevenin impedance. By neglecting the resistances, we can uh, have a simple static representation of this system where Xc is the transformer reactance and Xg is the grid reactance. Uh, the grid forming uh, control originates from two possible ways to control the active power flow in this circuit. And uh, the first way, uh, in the first way, it is assumed that the uh, information of the angle at the point of common coupling or PCC is available for the converter. So the converter based on this simple static uh, expression can uh, control the power. And psi one is the difference of the angle between the converter terminal and the PCC. In the second way, there is no information available for the converter, but still the converter can control the power with a modified static expression that has the effect of the grid impedance inside. The angle psi 2 here is the difference between the angle at the uh, terminal of the converter with the angle of this ideal voltage source. Uh, so to control the power, we can act on the magnitude of the uh, modulated voltage or on the uh, angle, but in the uh, transmission system, acting on the voltage requires a uh, large and invisible variation of the magnitude. Therefore, we are interested to control the active power only through the angle. So this is the origin of the grid forming control. And based on this uh, static considerations, I'm going to introduce three different grid forming controls named scheme A, scheme B, and scheme C. The first one is a scheme A, where a PLL provides the information of the angle at the PCC to the control. Uh, the control scheme and the Cauchy static model of the grid is presented in this figure. And in the control side, uh, you can see a simple integrator is enough to eliminate the power error, the active power error in the steady state and P will be equal to P star, which is the reference value. And you can see here an extra filter is added to the control, uh, is added to the control to remove the noise of power measurement. In the literature, you can see this filter is normally added to the power measurement. Uh, however, here we apply to the error, which has the same effect. And uh, in this case, if there is any step in the power reference, this filter can damp the oscillations properly. 
So if we suppose that uh, the PLL gives uh, the estimation of the angle fast enough, then the effect of these two inputs in the system can be canceled. Therefore, there is no relation between the active power response and the uh, variation of the grid frequency. So we can say that this control doesn't have the inertial effect. By having a look at the uh, transfer function of this control, we can see that there is uh, no effect of grid impedance. So we claim that this uh, control scheme is highly robust against the variation of the grid impedance. And uh, the droop control as a frequency support is optional in this control and it can be implemented through an outer loop. Uh, the next scheme is a scheme B where the PLL gives an estimation of the grid frequency to the control. In this case, even if the PLL dynamics are fast, we are not uh, capable of removing uh, the two inputs in contrary to the scheme A. However, an interesting feature of this control is that by writing the dynamic equation of the control and comparing this equation by the, uh, with the well-known swing equation, we notice that this control provides inertial effect with uh, an equivalent inertia constant and the damping factor. Again, uh, if we obtain the transfer function of P by P star for this control, uh, we, have, we can see the effect of grid impedance, so we claim that this control is sensible to the grid impedance variation. And also the droop control is optional, like the scheme A in this control. Uh, the third scheme is uh, uh, scheme C, where the PLL is removed and uh, uh, the estimated frequency by the PLL is replaced with the constant value, which is omega EM, and it is the uh, nominal frequency of the grid. Again, uh, we can write the dynamic equation of the control, and we can show that this scheme also has inertial effect. And uh, by writing the transfer function of P by P star, we, we again can see the effect of grid impedance in the transfer function, so this scheme is sensible to the grid impedance. Uh, and in the paper, we have shown that this uh, uh, relation exists between the grid frequency and active power control, active power of the converter, which is uh, the classical inverse droop equation. So there is no need to implement the droop control in an outer loop. In fact, uh, the frequency support is compulsory in this control. And the gain MP, which was a simple gain for the tuning in two previous controller schemes, here it is the droop gain and it cannot be changed for the tuning of the active power response. So uh, now I would like to validate the presented features for, the, for these three control schemes. Uh, in the first simulation study, we have done the robustness analysis in case of the grid impedance variation while the converter is connected to a constant frequency grid. According to the IEEE definition, short circuit ratio is defined as a ratio of available short circuit current to the load current at a particular loca location. And in our study, this particular location is actually point of common coupling. So based on that, SCR is uh, one divided by XG in per unit. Uh, here on the top right side, you can see the pole trajectory with respect to the SCR variation for each control scheme. And we changed the SCR from 1.4 to 8, from actually a very weak grid to a strong grid. And we can see that the dominant modes of the system for scheme A are not moving with respect to the SCR variation, which is not the case for the scheme B and scheme C. Time domain simulation on the down uh, is also showing uh, this fact. So as a result, uh, Scheme A is a uh, very good power injector and its power response is robust against SCR variation. And another important conclusion is that by including a PLL in the grid forming control, the system remains stable while, even while connecting to a very weak AC grid. Uh, we have done another robustness analysis for the schemes with PLL that are Scheme A and B with respect to the uh, variation of PLL response time. The result is that for a very fast PLL, the dominant modes of the system are mainly linked with the active power control loop. And for a medium value of PLL response time, these dominant modes 
uh, are linked with either the states in the PLL or the states in the active power control loop. And in fact, uh, there is an interaction between the PLL and active power control. However, there is no instability issue. And for a very slow PLL, uh, scheme A and B have the same response, and the response is actually the same as scheme C, which is uh, a scheme with no PLL. Therefore, the conclusion here is that uh, there is no stability issue with including the PLL in the grid forming control in normal operation. Uh, in the next study, I would like to assess the inertial effect of the introduced scheme. Therefore, uh, I need to connect a uh, converter to a variable frequency grid. So we consider this simple equivalent model for the uh, uh, grid with variable frequency. And we always suppose that the equivalent inertia of the grid is uh, five seconds. Then uh, we perform two studies. The first one is with no droop control for the converter. Since droop control is optional for the scheme A and B, we do this study only for these two schemes. And the uh, uh, next study, in the next study, we can uh, activate the droop control for the scheme A and B, and then we will be able to have a fair comparison between all uh, three control schemes. So here is the comparison between scheme A and scheme B. Uh, we have applied a step in the load at PCC, and you can see that right after the disturbance, the converter with uh, control scheme B injects active power in transient, due to the inertial effect. And we don't have that for the scheme A. And the grid frequency curves show that the Rokov and frequency nadir are considerably improved in the scheme A, in the, sorry, in the scheme B. Uh, if we activate uh, the droop control for uh, schemes A and B, uh, we can compare all three schemes, as I said. Uh, you can see, uh, here that active power response and grid frequency for the converter with scheme B and scheme C that both have the inertial effect, they are exactly the same. Uh, and although in the scheme A uh, there is no inertial effect, there is a small difference in terms of frequency nadir between all three schemes. This reason, uh, the reason uh, is that uh, fa the reason is the fast frequency support which is coming from the droop action. And to have a, a deeper analysis on this, we need to go back to the fundamental of the frequency control in synchronous machine and uh, highlight, the, highlight the differences with uh, power electronic converters. Uh, so in this uh, figure, uh, you can see the general model of a synchronous uh, machine for frequency studies based on swing equation. If we simply model the governor and prime mover uh, with the first order functions with these typical values, uh, we will have a considerable delay in the path of frequency support. However, with the power electronic converters, we don't have this delay. And a large share of uh, frequency support is caused by the droop uh, action, not uh, with the inertial effect. Uh, to clarify this fact, uh, we have done another comparison. The first, uh, the figure on the left shows the grid frequency response when a power converter with various inertia constant is connected to, the, to a variable frequency grid, and we apply a step in the load. The figure on the right uh, is for the case when a synchronous machine with different inertia uh, constant is in place with the converter. The frequency response with the converter on the left side uh, figure is much faster and the value of H uh, has a small impact on the frequency nadir. However, uh, with the synchronous machine on the, in the right side figure, uh, since the frequency is much more supported by the inertial effect, the response is slower and the value of edge has a big uh, impact on the frequency nadir. So in, in final part of the paper, we... Can you conclude quickly now? Yeah, yeah in one minute. Uh, we have included the DC bus dynamics uh, to the system in an application to HVDC uh, control. Uh, here is the scheme. This figure shows the understudy system. And uh, in the right side, we have the grid forming control. We merge both capacitors of the HVDC link in one single capacitor. 
and uh, we uh, have these assumptions as I uh, shown uh, as it is shown here. So we have two scenarios, and uh, we apply a step in the uh, power reference of the grid form in control, and another step in the AC load. So here is the result. Uh, in the figure on the top, we have applied a one parent step. Uh, and uh, the results show that uh, for this quite large disturbance, the DC controller is able to keep the voltage level in uh, the range of 5% around the nominal value, which is successfully achieved here. And in the next test, uh, we apply the step in the AC load and we observe that the absolute power from the DC bus is very close to the case with ideal DC, uh, with ideal DC bus, and uh, that was already presented. The reason is that the grid forming control is not responsible for the DC voltage control and therefore uh, the control and, uh, of DC and AC are decoupled. So if we look, uh, look at the DC bus voltage, in this case, we see that the scheme B and C in the first milliseconds after the disturbance, uh, the voltage is much reduced. Uh, it is because uh, of the higher amount of energy absorbed from the DC link due to the inertial effect. Uh, so the conclusion of this work is uh, presented here. We have shown that by including a PLL in the uh, control, we are able to introduce two other group-based grid forming controls, uh, which are scheme A and B in addition to the scheme C, which is not based on the PLL, and uh, it is very well known in the literature. We demonstrated that the PLL do not destabilize the system, even in case of connection to a very weak AC grid, and the frequency support is introduced uh, uh, in the control was addressed and uh, the differences with the classical power system based on synchronous machine was highlighted. Finally, uh, in application to HVDC systems, by considering the DC bus dynamics, we assess the effect of uh, each grid forming control on the DC bus voltage. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. If there is any question, I'm here to answer. Thank you, everyone, for your presentation. So, of course, I will not have any question because uh, uh, I know quite well this work. So, uh, I see that you have a question from uh, Costas Bonas. Uh, Ibrahim, can you can you answer? Do you, do you see the question, Ibrahim? Uh, yes, yes. Now I'm seeing. Uh, so, uh, as I said, for the first part of uh, our work, we consider an ideal uh, DC voltage source. So the power is absorbed from this ideal voltage source. And uh, I didn't have time to present the second one, but I can share the case of uh, non-ideal DC bus. In case of non-ideal DC bus here, Uh, we consider that the power is absorbed uh, with a first order uh, function, 10 milliseconds first order function from the other side of HVDC system. So the other side of HVDC system is responsible for uh, injecting the power to the DC link and actually responsible for uh, controlling the DC bus voltage and the grid forming control is uh, decoupled and just we wanted to see the effect of uh, this grid forming control with uh, inertia or without inertia on the DC bus voltage. So I hope uh, we could answer this question. Uh, 